Welcome to India's first short high yield audio companion for pedagogy viva prep in community medicine. There's truly nothing else like this in such a crisp engaging format. This is episode 1. Before we dive in, a quick request. Hit subscribe, like this episode and drop your next topic suggestion in the comments so we can build the series exactly the way you want it. Today we are unpacking the foundations, outcomes, objectives and the big frameworks with our expert Dr. Sharon. Thank you for joining us. Delighted to be here. Let's set the stage with Bloom's revised taxonomy. It climbs from remembering and understanding to applying, analyzing, evaluating and finally creating, moving from basic recall to higher order thinking. So in a viva, when I ask define herd immunity, I'm assessing remembering. But if I ask compare two strategies and justify one, I've moved to evaluating, right? Exactly. The level depends on what the task demands. Pause and recall. List the six levels in order. Now competence. In pedagogy speak, a competency blends knowledge, skills, attitudes and values to perform effectively and consistently in real world situations. Which brings us to the three domains of learning. Cognitive for knowledge, affective for attitudes and psychomotor for skills. In cognitive, the highest is creating, assess with essays or projects. For affective, internalizing values use reflections or attitude scales psychomotor culminates in automatic naturalized performance assess with demonstrations or simulations dr sharan learners in md programs are adults so how does that change our teaching lens pedagogy versus andragogy great pivot pedagogy assumes teacher directed learning more structure clearer guidance and the teacher deciding pace and sequence andragogy assumes adult learners are self directed they bring in prior experience want immediate relevance and are motivated by solving real problems so in practice andragogy would mean case first problem first and inviting residents to share their prior experiences exactly start with the realistic problem elicit what they already know and let them co own goals think as a coach rather than a commander quick self check pause and recall name two assumptions of andragogy you can apply in your next class Now Dr Sharan give us the blueprint for writing strong objectives use the abcd model that is audience behavior condition and degree by the end md residents that is audience will calculate attack rate that is behavior given line listing data that is condition with 95% accuracy that is degree and how do we judge the quality of that objective make it smart that is specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound As faculty, what would you tweak first? Teaching, assessment or the objective? Start with alignment. Ensure objectives, teaching methods and assessment all point to the same target. Misalignment. Say you teach with cases but test only definitions creates confusion. Speaking of alignment versus integration, clarify the difference. So alignment links the pieces within a single course. Integration stitches content across disciplines horizontally within the same level. or vertically across years so learners revisit ideas with rising complexity the spiral many students hear about teaching objectives versus learning objectives are they different yes teaching objectives describe what the instructor will cover learning objectives specify what learners will be able to do for exams always frame learning objectives pause and recall what does each letter in abcd stand for another crucial framework miller's pyramid for clinical competence at the base is knows then knows how shows how and at the top does which is performance in real practice assessments must climb accordingly from written tests to observed tasks and workplace based judgments where do competencies fit into day to day planning map each competency to measurable slos that is specific learning objectives using abcd then choose taking an assessment aligned with the miller level you aim to reach For example, for outbreak investigation, your SLU might sit at shows how with a tabletop simulation. Let's talk attention. What is the typical attention span during a lecture? About 10 to 20 minutes before it wanes. So where is stimuli? Reset attention or shift activity. Which brings us to stimulus variation. Exactly. Consciously change voice, pace, interaction pattern, media and positioning. Strategic pausing works wonders. A neat classroom trick I love is the lighthouse effect. Yes, 
periodically scan the room like a lighthouse beam to maintain engagement and inclusivity. It signals presence and keeps the whole class involved. Last piece. Objectives at different levels. Could you give one example each? Sure. In cognitive analyze level, given an epidemiological table, students will analyze confounding versus effect modification. In effective organize level, students will consistently prioritize respectful communication during field visits. In psychomotor mechanism level, students will perform intramuscular vaccination with correct asepsis. Tie each to ABCD, then pick the right assessment, case analysis, reflective rubric, or direct observation checklist. That's your foundation. Bloom's Ladder, Domains, ABCD, Smart, Alignment, Integration, The Spiral, Stimulus Variation, and Miller's Pyramid. Save this episode and rehearse with a friend. In your viva, speak in that sequence. It feels logical and examiner-friendly. If this helped, subscribe, like and share with your MD peers. Tell us the next pedagogy topic you want. Your comment could shape the next episode. See you in part 2.